Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this snowy beach landscape. Um, it's another one of our um, Christmas card ideas videos. Um, but obviously it is just a snow scene, but I think you could quite easily turn it into a rather lovely Christmas card if you wanted to. The lighthouse here is based on a photograph from Pixabay of the beautiful lighthouse. Um, I think it's pronounced Pard van Markham in the Netherlands. Here's the photograph. I'll try and remember to put the link in the description below. So I'm using that as inspiration for this line and wash snowy beach scene. I'm starting off with Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. Um, it's a quarter imperial sheet and it's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. Um, my board is at an angle of about 45 degrees. The first thing I'm going to do is sketch out the scene and then I shall uh, firm up the sketch with waterproof black ink um, and then paint the scene. So to start with, I'm putting in a nice low horizon and I'm going to put it in sort of like a double horizon because if you look at the reference photograph, um, there's either a very small little bit of sea in the distance with just the faintest um, shadowy hint of a bit of distant land. Um, or a distant headland maybe. So I'm going to just indicate that with two lines and then using my large carpenter's pencil I shall rough in the position of the rocky outcrop on which the lighthouse and the houses next to it are built. I like to use a carpenter's pencil for the same reason that I like to use quite large brushes when I paint. Um, it stops me from getting bogged down with fiddly detail so that when I draw I obviously want to get the placement of the lines and the proportions of the lighthouse right but I don't want to get bogged down with detail I just want to get the positions correct and then I can go in with a little bit more detail with the fine liner and then just suggest even more with paint. Because this is a line and wash painting, I'm trying to make sure that my proportions are as good as I can get them while still keeping it very, very simple. The reason for that is if my pencil drawing is right, and of course I can adjust my pencil drawing if I need to and tighten it up a bit um, and adjust it with um, an eraser and redraw certain lines until I feel that they're right. Once I actually go over the pencil drawing with waterproof black fine liner ink, then I can't really make any adjustments to that apart from maybe covering any mistakes over with a little bit of white gouache or something like that. But if my drawing is right in pencil, um, then my line work will eventually be right. Um, when I come to do the ink in a moment. So here's the finished ink drawing. If you're interested in um, a copy of that, then there'll be one available over on my Patreon site. So follow the link if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon. So onto the painting, I'm using a large um, harky brush to just simply wet the sky all over. Once I've wet the sky and the snow and, and sort of sliver of sea area, um, I shall take a piece of paper towel or a tissue and I shall just remove the water from the lighthouse. Just keeping that lighthouse dry means that when I paint the sky, I'll be able to more easily avoid the lighthouse, which is lovely and bright white with part of it in shadow. So I want to cut around it when I paint my um, my sky, just to keep those colours nice and bright. Now I've mixed up quite a watery mixture of cerulean blue with a touch of indigo and a touch of Payne's grey and I'm sweeping it across the sky. I'm using my Princeton Aqua Elite um, Mottler brush. It's one and a half inches and it's a lovely wash brush 
for painting skies. And you can see I'm cutting around the lighthouse and it's already standing out quite beautifully as I use the wet in wet method to get these sort of scudding clouds. I want a really nice clean sky um, and then put some colour, very light colour across the snow just to take away the white of the paper and give me a lovely sort of pale blue reflected light. Just a little bit more of that blue, a little bit stronger across the top. And then I'm going to lay my board flat as soon as my sky looks okay because I don't want it to run down the page. Um, and then I can put a little bit more snow into the foreground. Just some slightly darker blues for shadows. I can establish that, that thin line or band of C in the distance. And while everything's still wet, I can introduce a little bit of shadow using some burnt umber. This is all using the same brush. And I'm still painting wet in wet, so I'm making sure that I dab my brush off onto a paper towel um, before I touch it onto the paper, which is beginning to dry. I don't want to introduce any extra moisture onto the page, otherwise I might end up with some cauliflowers or blooms. So this is slightly richer paint, but it's still softening and diffusing. And it's giving me a bit more focus and depth around the base of my lighthouse, uh, which is where the focal point is. I'm trying to keep the snow really pristine and plain across the foreground so that all the attention will be on the sky and the lighthouse. Then once I've got enough shadows um, in the snow there, then I can just soften them out a little bit with a clean, damp, um, three quarter inch flat brush. And as I say, slightly feather things through, even things out, maybe a little bit more onto the sea area. And then I need to leave this layer to dry completely. And it's important to try not to fiddle too much with it at this stage um, because then it will dry nice and fresh. Here it is, um, it's dry, and so I'm going to mix up some shadow colour. And the shadow colour is just going to be quite a watery mixture of the cerulean blue and indigo mix. But I've added some alizarin crimson to give it this kind of greyish purple. But it's quite a transparent colour, so I should be able to establish some really nice and slightly varied shadows on the lighthouse by building up a couple of different layers of this colour. I'm using my three quarter inch flat brush. If you're painting smaller, then use a smaller flat brush or a round brush with a good point to apply the shadow. And then take a smaller brush, clean and damp, like a little mop brush, and you can soften the shadows. And that helps to um, really help with the transition between the shadow side and the side of the lighthouse that's being um, hit by the sunlight. I'm using a small calligraphy brush to put a bit of shadow into the chimneys, maybe darken up that shadow around the base of the lighthouse. Still trying to keep it nice and soft. So now I'm painting wet into wet and things are all just softening and diffusing in those areas of shadow. And now I've mixed up some stronger, brighter alizarin crimson with a little bit of burnt sienna just to dull it down a little bit and warm it up. Um, I'm painting the cap of the lighthouse and with the cal calligraphy brush to get a good accurate shape and then transferring to a small flat, flat brush with the same colour to paint these roofs. I can drop a bit of shadow into those roofs a little bit later, but for now, um, I'm just going to keep them sort of nice and bright red. Of course, they will soften and lighten as they dry. Um, and then I'm going to add a little, a few, a few small touches of red, something and nothing across the base of the lighthouse. 
that helps to keep the eye focused, particularly in that area where it's the only area where there's any colour other than um, the blue and the pale of the sky and the pale blue for the snow. I'm now going to use a little bit of white gouache and I'm going to place that onto the fence posts here and there. Um, this will help to bring those fence posts forward um, and it will look like they've got some snow on them but say it brings those fence posts a little bit further forward on both sides of the lighthouse and helps us to see the lighthouse as pushed back from these structures very slightly. So it's all about creating a few different layers, if you like. We've got the foreground is just plain snow, and then the midground consists of the, the fences at the front, um, and then we move back to the lighthouse and the figures, and then in the distance there's the sliver of sea, and then above it all the sky. This is just a little bit of the um, cerulean and indigo mix with a tiny bit of alizarin crimson uh, just to put some nice deep bluish shadows into the sort of window panes and introduce some slightly darker shadows here and there. Then back in with the white gouache and just a bit underneath the darkest area of the platform on which the lighthouse is built. Again, to sort of draw the eye to that and to give the impression of sort of piled up snow. If it looks too bright, you can soften the gouache back. And also if it fades a bit too much, you can put another layer of gouache on once it dries. Um, it depends what sort of effect you like the best. And then there's just going to be a little bit of shadow onto the roofs, um, which I didn't film. And now I think that's just about finished. So I'm going to remove the tape and have a look at it. And I think once you see it with a clean white border, it's easy to see whether or not it's finished. And then you can make some a few additions if you like, but I don't think I need to. I'm all right with this. I like the plainness of the foreground and um, just the subtle shadows on the buildings. I think I like the sort of clean, pristine snow in front of the lighthouse. It gives it that lovely, fresh effect. So let's see how it looks in real life because my studio is, um, is not very good. The winter light isn't great, but here are the colors. You can see how that lovely cerulean blue and alizarin crimson really pops against the sort of pale blue of the snow. And using the um, waterproof fine liners for all the darkest tones is a nice simple way of making sure the tonal values are right, right from the start. And I think that the uh, burnt umber is really nice for just warming up the snow in places. And the red, of course, works wonderfully to draw attention to the lighthouse. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.